Hi, I'm Terrell Turner, the host of the Business Talk Library. And today I have another amazing guest on, Miss Anita A.C. Clinton. And the reason why I think this guest is amazing is because we've had a couple conversations um, and we've talked a little bit more about her and her passion and what she's doing. I also think that I really, really like her approach when it comes down to really helping people live out you know, their destiny or live out their purpose, whether that's in a business or in a career, because the truth of the matter is not everyone wants to become an entrepreneur. And I'll be honest, I mean, not everyone really should be an entrepreneur because that may not be your thing. So whatever path you choose, there is a destiny, there is a purpose, there is fulfillment that you should be enjoying in that path. And Anita speaks to both. And I think that is amazing. So welcome to the show, Anita. Thank you for having me. Super excited to be here. Absolutely. Absolutely. It definitely is a pleasure to have you on. Now, before we jump into the details of your business, tell us a little bit about, you know, your background and what kind of like led you down the path to say, hey, you know what? This is where I want to invest my time to add value to others. Yeah, you know, so my start is probably different from most people. Um, so I was a basketball player. I have been playing basketball since the age of 10. And I was privileged enough to literally travel the world plan, but to get a full scholarship to the University of Illinois Champaign-Urbana. And so from that, you know, my goals, my dreams, and my desire was to be a professional basketball player. It was something that I did. I, did, I was great at it. And my junior year, I, um, my second, our second Big Ten game, I literally ripped my knee to shreds. Now, I have been playing basketball since the age of 10, and I could probably count on one hand how many injuries I've had, but that particular injury, um, it took me out. Like, it literally killed my collegiate career. It killed my aspirations to play on a professional level. And mentally, it, 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 it took me out because my entire life, my entire identity was wrapped inside Anita Clinton, the basketball player. And so without basketball, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what I was going to do. And so I had had reconstructive knee surgery and they had given me a strong medicine cocktail. And I decided that my life was no longer worth living. And I took every single pill that had been prescribed to me at the time. And I laid down, I said a small apologetic prayer to God. And my intent was not to wake up, to go wherever you go when you die. And four hours later, I woke up and every single pill uh, I began to regurgitate. And so from that point, I get to the hospital and the doctors are looking at the potency of the prescription of the medication that I took. And I hear one of them say, it's a miracle that she's still alive. And from that point, I began to question, why am I here? What is the reason for my ex existence? And that was the start of this journey that I found myself on of, okay, why was I saved? And so after basketball, I ended up joining a sorority. And so for me, you know, basketball was my life. That was my family. And so then the sorority became my life and my family. And so let me just tell you a little bit about the sorority and how it links up to my business or into business in general. So to join the sorority, we were required to create a business proposal where we would give them ideals for events, or things that they can do in six categories, right? And so I had never written a business proposal before. I had no clue what it was. And so I began to research, like, what is a business proposal? How do you write one? And so I came up with my six ideas and I submitted them. Now, let me just side note, from a sorority or a, even a business perspective, like, that's brilliant because you got hundreds of people that are applying to get into this organization and you got a hundred different ideas for every category that you have coming in. So if you... You, you guys, you, know, you need something to do? It's right there for you because yeah. these candidates have literally told you some potential things that you could do. Brilliant. And so I make it into the sorority and our sorority was ran like a business. Like we had sales and marketing. We had promotions. We had operations. We had accounting and finance. We had every division and department in the sorority that you would have in a business. And so for me, that was my introduction into entrepreneurship, into small business. And it kind of, um, there was an excitement or a passion around it that I didn't know existed. And so I say all the time that my business acumen was built in the sorority back in college. 
Wow, that that is amazing. I mean, in, in such a such a rich story of just like that, the different things that you went down. And I want to go back to first. I mean, when it comes down to basketball, starting at age ten, what was it that really sparked it for you to have you know even the start in it to become to love it so much? Was there someone in your family that played or? Yeah, so interesting story, right? So I am a people pleaser, right? People pleaser. And my favorite teacher, so my favorite subject is math. Um, and my favorite teacher was the math teacher, Miss Dunbar. But Miss Dunbar also happens to be the basketball coach. And so I'm coming out of class one day and at 10, I'm 5'11", wearing a size 11 shoe, like for real, for real. <laughs> and she says, Anita, have you thought about playing basketball? And I'm like, mm no she's like you should try out for the team now because I loved her I was like okay and so I tried out for the team and who knew I guess she knew but I was a natural and it took like I became a starter at the age of 10 on the seventh grade team wow. <laughs> so impressive. yeah that was it but I was tall you know I was tall I was slanky but I was also really quick and um, I'm a perfectionist. And so anything that I do, I want to be the best. And so I practice. I mean, I practice hard to be the best. Mm -hmm. Now, how much of that, you know, still stuck with you as you started to go into, you know, entrepreneurship and business ownership? Yeah, so work ethic, number one, right? Um, I definitely understand, like, in order to be successful in anything that you do in life, you got to work at it. Like you got to perfect your skills. You got to perfect your talent. Um, you know, Stephen Covey talks about in the book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, sharpen the saw, sharpening the saw. You got to continue even in business to sharpen the saw if you want to be effective, if you want to be successful. And basketball, gotcha. that's where it all started for me. Mm -hmm. Now, as you start to, like I said, get exposed more to the business side, entrepreneurship, you know, one of the things that a lot of entrepreneurs, you know, have a challenge with at times is finding their niche. So how was that journey for you of like, hey, there's a ton of different directions you could go in business and entrepreneurship, but how did you start to kind of navigate down like, hey, this is the area that I'm going to, this is the way that I'm going to approach entrepreneurship and this is going to be my niche. Yep. So for me, it was a lot of trial and error, right? So it started with that one question, why am I here? Why was I saved, right? So from there, I begin this journey of literally just trying different things to see what I like, to see what I enjoy. And in all of the different things that I've tried, it's so funny, um, I was telling a friend, like I have managed artists, hip hop artists, <laughs> I've managed painters, I've managed a TV host, um, I've done real estate, I've done graphic design. Like there's a wide array of industries that I've been privileged to get in. And I look at it like just creating, having this knowledge box, right? And so I'm putting all of this ammo that I'm learning throughout all of these different processes inside of this knowledge box. But for me, it was, okay, Anita, what are you passionate about? And then what are you skilled and gifted to do? right? Where is the place where those two meet? And in all of the businesses that I, that I had or that I've been a part of, it was one constant. And that was the desire to help people do whatever it was that they were trying to do. So everything that I've done up until this point, that was the foundation of it. And so, you know, I talk about all the time, what should, what's your why, right? Why are you doing what you're doing? When you can determine and define your why and your what, how you do it doesn't really matter as long as it still gets you to the why, right? And so I write books, you know, I, um, I have a podcast that I do, I do coaching, Coaching now, coaching isn't necessarily my favorite thing to do, but it is one of the things that I do. But there's a different, a wide array of things that I can do to help people get to the why. And my why is, I believe that we all have a unique assignment. We all have a purpose here in the earth. And when we connect to and begin to walk in whatever that thing may be, it not only changes our individual lives, but it transforms the experience that we all have in the world. Put our world becomes a better place when people are walking in their purpose. And so everything that I do is geared toward helping people connect to whatever it is that they're here to do, because I want our world to be a better place to live in. Awesome. And, you know, there's quite a bit there I want to unpack. So the first one is, you know, 
on when it comes down to the uh, the book that you you let's talk a little bit about that and just kind of how that what's the book about and how that journey unfolded with actually writing the book because there are a ton of people who say you know what <laughs> I should write a book but they can't seem to you know get to that point where they have the actual book written so you've done that which is probably what millions of people wish they could do so tell us a little bit about your book and just about that journey to actually getting it done yeah so you know the book is literally the end result of my 20 year journey it is the answer to the question why was i saved what am i here for right and so it's it's really amazing as I think back on it, how all of it just kind of came together um, to land to land me where I am today. And so the book is about, you know, it's literally a step-by-step guide to help someone who wants to know what it is that they're here to do, discover what that is, create a plan of action or a strategy around doing whatever that is, and then executing that thing. And so when I say it's everything you need to know to kickstart your destiny or to kickstart the purpose, your purpose walk, it is everything that you need to know to get started. And I love that in the beginning, you mentioned that, you know, not everyone is going to start a business. Well, initially, when I started writing a book, like 10 years ago, for real, 10 years ago, um, the focus of the book was on everyone starting a business. And the reason that that book was never published is because it was never complete. And the completion of the book was the, was the idea that not everybody will start a business, that some people will fulfill their purpose inside of working for someone else, inside of a career. And that was the element that was missing all along. And so once I got that revelation and was able to really explore that and put that into the book, then the book became whole and complete. And it was like, okay, it's ready to publish. Awesome. Now, where can people find a copy of the book? Yeah, so you can head on over to destinystarterbook.com and everything that you need to know is there. Awesome, awesome. So let's unpack a little bit about, you know, the podcast. Now, tell us a little bit about, you know, the name of the podcast and what can people expect when they check the podcast out? Yeah, so the podcast is Great Global Podcast. And so Be Great Global is my way, my effort of helping people discover, strategize, and execute whatever it is that they are called to do uh, at a low cost, right? And so it's all about providing information. And, you know, the cost come in is if you're hiring me to do, you know, personal one-on-one coaching. But the podcast is just my way to further extend that, but also really to talk to people, normal, average people that are stepping into or have walked or are walking in their purpose. And the idea behind it is, you know, if they can do it, then so can you. Right. And so we have a tendency to look at the people that have made it, um, you know, like the Tony Robbins and the Oprah Winfrey's of the world. And we think that they're extraordinary. And yeah, they they do some extraordinary things, but they're normal people just like you and I. They all started somewhere and has grown and built to the level that they are now. And so you can, independent of who you are, where you come from, you know, what side of the tracks you grew up on, there is something that you are here to do do and everything that you need to do it for the most part is already inside of you and anything else that you need um you know god the universe will send it across your path as long as you're moving forward in that awesome now so when they are listening for the podcast um how many different platforms or where can they find the podcast yeah the podcast is everywhere that podcasts are um so you can go to itunes you can go to spotify uh stitcher amazon it's everywhere where podcasts are offered if you just type great be the be great global podcast and google uh, it will definitely come up or head on over to our site begreatglobal.com Awesome. Awesome. Now, one of the things that I, you know, we talked about before um, they started the recording was one of the things that you're doing with your podcast is actually having theme months where you're focusing on different topics. So what are some of the topics that you're focusing on in 2021? Yeah, so super exciting, right? So this is new. Um, So last year, at the end of last year, or toward the end, after I wrote my book, I was like, man, you know, what if I went to a topic-based series, podcast type podcast? And so I 
brought on a whole bunch of authors. And so, you know, this year we're focusing on podcasters, but we're also going to be focusing on entrepreneurs and we also want to focus on careers, right? So I want to bring in people uh, that are doing amazing things inside of their careers for those individuals that are doing, you know, that who will fulfill their purpose inside of working for someone else. And so we're literally trying to span um, all of the areas that someone can literally step into their purpose in. And the goal of it is, you know, once again, if these people that I'm bringing on can do it, then so can you, right? So we're looking to inspire and encourage people to come on, let's do this. Because the more people that are walking in their purpose, the world that we know right now, the experiences that we have, that's the way to transform it. Wow. I think that that is so amazing because I always love it when someone can really grasp that, you know, you, you can start work walking in your purpose. I mean, and just like any trip, I mean, it just starts with a few steps to where they don't have to, to wait until their circumstances change to where they right. start walking. And that's one of the things I really loved about, like I said, with some of the content that you put out and just reading your profile, I, I really love that. So you know, when it comes down to, you know, people being able to see the full picture of all that Anita A.C. Clinton is, is sharing, all the value she's delivering, what's, how can people find you online or how can they find you on social media? Yep. So uh, BeGreatGlobal.com is the base website that you can go to. Everything is there. In addition, I am A.C. Clinton and the number one on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Pinterest. And so AC Clinton and the number one is where you can find me. Okay. Now, now this one is a bit of a selfish question um, on, because when you mentioned Pinterest, I was like, okay, all right. That's a platform that I have thought about, you know, expanding to, to where it's just like, I really haven't quite wrapped my mind around it. So how did you end up using or working with Pinterest into kind of like your whole branding and your whole marketing approach? Yeah, great, great question, right? <laughs> so um, I'm not social, right? So I'm just not. I, I am an ultra introvert. Um, my, my pastime, my enjoyment comes to being alone, right? I know it's horrible, but it's my reality, right? Like I like to read a book. Like that for me is exciting versus going to a social gathering or a social event. And so when I think about social media, you know, it's a little stressful for me. You know, it's a little, it could be overwhelming um, because, you know, you got to have engagement, right? So especially on Facebook and on LinkedIn and on Twitter, like all of those platforms, um, the foundation of being successful is engagement, right? And so because I'm a introvert, uh, Pinterest is my focus for 2021. And because of the fact that with Pinterest, like, there is no engagement. Like really, you can just put out amazing content, right? And as long as you, you know, got the, your keywords put inside your titles, uh, you got amazing graphics, right? Because it's a visual platform. Uh, so people are gonna see the, the visual aesthetics first. And then they're looking at the title and what you have to say, and then they're clicking to go to wherever you're sending them, which is also another bit because on Facebook, Facebook wants you to stay on Facebook. LinkedIn wants you to stay on LinkedIn. Twitter want people to stay on Twitter. Well, Pinterest is different. They literally are okay that you're sending people to your website or you're sending people to your YouTube channel or that you're sending them somewhere else other than Pinterest. And so it's 100% my focus. Now, will I still be publishing on the other platforms? Yes. But Pinterest is my number one focus for 2021 for, for those reasons that I just uh, talked about. Awesome. You know, now, see, I, I've learned something new because, you know, one of the things that I found to be interesting when I first started getting into the different platforms, just like, you know, each platform kind of has its own personality. And mm -hmm. if you're going to be effective in it, you have to learn it to where, Pinterest is just, and, and I'll be honest, even Twitter, like I'm not, I, I, have, I think I have a Twitter account. I'm not as active on it, but it's just like just right. learning the different personalities. So Pinterest has been one that's been on my mind. Like, you know, I've heard a lot of good things about it. So maybe I will have to talk a little bit more about that. <laughs> yeah, it's great for um, 
if you're looking to get, you know, traffic coming to your website or traffic to the content that you're putting out there. It's a great avenue for that. But once again, it's visual, right? And so you have to have some, like YouTube, like you got to have some amazing thumbnails for YouTube in order to attract people because there's so much that's happening in there. It's the same thing with Twitter. So you want to, I mean, with Pinterest, you want to have some amazing visuals to get people to get to wherever you're trying to send them. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So now one of the things that I'm very interested in um, is, you know, as you kind of, you know, have looked at your journey of where you've been and really, like I said, starting off in basketball and having this, this amazing, you know, life altering miracle to where it really changed your perspective, you know, what do you see as far as the future for Miss Anita A.C. Clinton? Yeah, you know, so I am all about, once again, my why is helping people connect to their purpose. So I see myself as kind of the bridge, right, to help people get from one side of that bridge uh, over to the other side, which is the place that they were created to operate in. And so I'll be doing more of that. Um, speaking is 2020 was my goal for 2020 was to end increase the number of speaking engagements that I have. And so that's going to be something that's going to be definitely at the forefront, as well as I love writing, right? So I'm working on my second book now. So super excited about that. But just doing more of that in connecting with more people. Like my vision for Be Great Global is 1 billion people walking boldly in their greatness, transforming the face of our world. And I got to get out there and reach you know, a million, a billion people in order to make that a reality. I love it. I love it. And now before we wrap up the interview, one of the questions that I like to ask every guest that comes on is, you know, when you're thinking about your journey of where you've been, you think about where you are now and where you want to go, what's two pieces of advice that you would share with other business owners? Yeah, absolutely. Um, number one is going to be, you know, what's your why, right? Be very clear about your why, because the why is the thing that keeps you connected, that keeps you going. Uh, when times get hard, not if, but when, because they will get hard, the why is the thing that keeps you in it, that keeps you motivated. So know your why. And then the second thing is have systems, right? Because typically as small business owners, as solopreneurs, um, mompreneurs, right? these systems and procedures and having those in place help make running your business easier, right? So you're not as scrambled, you're way more organized by having those in place. So know your why, know why you're doing what it is that you're doing, and then have systems and processes in place to help do what you do uh, more efficient. Awesome. Well, Anita, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's definitely been a pleasure of hearing more about your story, your business, your journey. And I, I love the mission that you're on. So please definitely continue doing what you are doing. And thank you so much for coming on the show. Awesome. Well, thank you for having me. I truly appreciate it. And as I share with you already, I absolutely love what you're doing as well. Uh, keep it up. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in to the Business Talk Library. If you like our content, be sure to follow us on social media. And if you want to see more of our exclusive content, you can subscribe and become a member on patreon.com forward slash business talk library. Hey, the Business Talk Library is the place where business makes sense. Hey, it's your girl, Tia Robertson. I'm the host of Entrepreneur Insider. Eastern for entrepreneurs and news that you need to know about. See you there. This is
Tyron and Nicole with your weekly RATV news break. Each Thursday at 12 noon Eastern, we'll come to you with the latest news, trends, and more with a positive spin. We know there's a lot of positive news that doesn't get reported, but we want to give you the opportunity to share your story here on RATV. If you have a positive news story you want us to share, you can submit your story to news at re-tv.net. Don't forget to subscribe to the Relationship Entertainment Television YouTube channel. Download the new RATV Live app on your mobile device and follow Relationship Entertainment Television on your favorite social media platform. Don't forget, make sure you tune in to the RATV News Break each Thursday at 12 p.m. Eastern. Until, Until then, be blessed and be great. Growing up in the church, we saw a lot. Things that people refused to talk about. The elephants in the room. Mental illness, sexual abuse, broken family, domestic violence, and so much more. The Big E, The Elephant in the Room is a show that sheds light on these topics. We're here to speak about the unspeakable. Welcome to What's Going On? My name is Demita Joe. Each Wednesday, you can find me here at 3 p.m. I'll be over here discussing different things that are going on and try to bring you a boost of positivity for your week because we all need this. We're going to share some feel-good stories. We might find a hometown hero. We may take a look at some trending topics. And sometimes we might even find a lesson in a not-so-warm and fuzzy story if we can. I'm Demita Joe, and I'll see you guys on the next episode right here on What's Going On?